Hey guys, so today we are going to be talking sourdough and specifically how do you put your sourdough starter to rest when you need to take a break or maybe you need to take a trip and you don't want to take your sourdough starter with you, though I have known people who do that. It's definitely an option. And then on the opposite side of it, you've had your sourdough starter in the fridge for a little bit, but you're ready to bring it out and to bring it back to life, to wake it back up so that you can start creating sourdough items for you and your family again. So if you have a sourdough starter or are interested in sourdough starter, let me know beneath the comments if you're going to be starting one or if you have one, how long you've had the same starter going. The same principle, the same exact steps that we're going to do to either put your starter in the fridge or bring it out are the exact same. The first thing that we're going to do is you're gonna take your starter, now you may have a lot more in the jar than I do in this one, but we're going to discard down to about two tablespoons of starter left in the container. So to discard is we are simply gonna be removing quite a bit of this starter from our original starter into another container. Now you can put this in your compost pile, but I definitely recommend using your discard to make some recipes and to actually cook with. You can put it into any recipe that takes flour or water, or of course, use it in actual sourdough recipe. So you can see that I get a little bit messy with my sourdough starter, but I'm not actually measuring that there's exactly two tablespoons worth of starter in the jar. This is really approximate. So anywhere from two tablespoons to a quarter cup is what we're after. So you can just eyeball it. Really with the sourdough starter, you're, it's fine. It's pretty resilient. So we're gonna remove our starter that we're discarding to use in a recipe later. And now we are going to feed this with our flour and water. So I have a half a cup of flour that I'm gonna be adding in here. Now you can just use this with using volume measurements or if you have a scale and you wanna use a scale, you can do equal amounts of flour and equal amounts of water. When you do it by weight, you'll see that the water, of course, weighs a lot more than the flour. So if you're just using measuring cups, I like to double the amount of flour to the amount of water. Then we're gonna stir that and combine it well. And you'll see that I always keep my starters on the thicker side. So as I stir this together, you wanna to make sure that all of the flour is wet and incorporated. We don't want dry clumps. So this is a little bit too thick. So then we just add a little bit more water, but it's easier to just add a little bit more water in than it is to start with too much and to have to keep feeding it a whole bunch. And I pretty much keep mine about the consistency of really thick pancake batter. I don't like mine to be on the runny side, especially when I am putting it into the fridge. Putting it into the fridge just slows down your good bacteria and the rate at which it feeds. So it doesn't stop it, but it puts it into kind of like a hibernation mode, but it still needs to have food. And I always make sure that I kind of scrape down the sides of the jar. Now I don't make sure that it's perfectly clean, but I do try to scrape it down so I don't have a whole bunch clinging to the sides because if you do, those parts that are stuck to the side of the jar, those just have a little bit higher likelihood to mold. But to be honest, I've never had any mold issues in eight plus years of doing sourdough starters. So now we've got that, it's been fed. And we're just gonna put our lid on that and put that right into the fridge. Now your starter is ready to go into the fridge. You can put it in the fridge, you can take it out and feed it once a week. I've left mine in the fridge for up to six months without feeding it. I don't recommend that. It was in sad shape when it came out, but it totally bounced back and I still have that exact same starter. But it really is best practice when you put it in the fridge. If you can pull it out once every one or two weeks to feed it, it's going to work a lot better for you when you bring it out and you're ready to get it going again to bake bread. You won't have nearly as long of a period as getting it into that active state again, which we really need when we're using it as our only leavening agent or you're not using any store-bought yeast in order to get that bread to rise up. And the reason that I discard down to about two tablespoons or a quarter cup of starter is because that way there's a higher volume or a higher ratio of fresh food 
for that bacteria in the starter to feed on because when we are putting it into the fridge, obviously we're not feeding it on a daily basis. And so this helps it stay stronger longer in that hibernation mode. And the same reason when I bring it out of the fridge that I discard down is so that it's got a lot of food when I feed it again and it just helps it to become active faster and it keeps your culture in a state that is just healthier and it's stronger when you follow that routine for putting it in the fridge and when you're bringing it back out and getting it active again to feed. And when I do take it out of the fridge, I let it come to room temperature and then I discard down and then I feed it. And if you're gonna be putting it right back in the fridge and you're not gonna be working on getting it back into a really active state and cooking with it for a few days, then I leave it out and I, to get to room temperature, go ahead and feed it and I'll let it, let it stay out for just a little bit so that it's got the warmth to kind of get it back into that feeding mode and then I put it back in the fridge. If you would like information on starting your own sourdough starter, so if you've never made a sourdough starter before or you made it but it didn't really turn out so good, I have got a free video lesson for you on how to make a sourdough starter complete with recipes and download guides. You can get that at melissaknorris.com forward slash sourdough and be well on your way to making a healthy sourdough starter for you and your family. Make sure that you hit subscribe so that you get notified when we have a new video that comes out every Wednesday. So let me know in the comments below how your sourdough starter is going, if you've got one, and how old it is.